We're here and I'm super excited because this is the first of our new series. We've been talking about how there's all these nuggets and these golden nuggets locked in research papers in math ed that tell us like really how to teach well in classrooms, right, Mark? Yeah. And so we're here and we're excited because we're going to be talking about four things, four things that, that people... you and I found from one particular paper right. um, that we thought when we were reading through it, we were like, okay, what does this really mean for teaching? Yep. Um, and we highlighted it and we talked about it. And so now we've picked up four things from that paper that we're going to tell people what it really means for their classroom, what they can try in their classroom, right? Right. Okay. So here's the paper. Here's the paper. It was about number talks. And our first thing that we really want to talk about with teachers is, Tina, what is a number talk? No kidding, right? So they told us what a number talk really was at the beginning. It's a short mathematical whole class discussion during which students solve problems and share the ways of seeing and reasoning about mathematics. Eek. Okay. That was a big together? mouthful. Yeah, that was a big <laughs> mouthful, right? <laughs> yeah. I almost, I almost like, you know, had to, I couldn't breathe while I was finishing it and I almost had to breathe during it. Okay. So here, here's something easier and faster that they provide on the second page. So it's a five to 15 minute classroom conversation around purposely crafted problems that are solved mentally. So Mark, that just means it's a, it's a short classroom discussion around a mental math problem is basically what it's saying. Yeah. And okay. So that leads into this idea of number two, which is like this safe learning environment for kids. Yeah. We'll talk about that. And we know that math can bring up some like unsafe feelings. So what are we going to do? What's the teacher going to do, Tina? Yeah. So in this paper, they talk, this is right on this page about how they need to be comfortable and they need to be sharing ideas without fear and ridicule or shame, right, around it. So we got to make sure that we can't do that. So this fits in with one of their other small recommendations in this paper about the finger use. So the, this is the kind of thing that we see in classrooms when kids are given that think time. So the teacher poses the question and then gives them that think time. And when you look around, you see kids going like this, right? And that indicates how many solutions they've found and that they're sort of done thinking about this question. Yeah, because it's nice because I could be on like number one and have zero on my hand, but I but but because it might no hands are waving around, I don't have to like feel bad. Yeah, exactly. So that creates a safe environment because if someone's done and they're like, I got the answer, I got the answer, yeah. and someone's just starting to think, like, can you imagine? You're like, <gasps> yep, this isn't safe. I can't share. Everyone already has this answer, and I don't. Right. Okay, so that's that's tip. That's one. The, the number three we're going to talk about is the teacher's questions. That, like they're happening at the same time in this. What's what's a good way for the teacher to think about their question? Yeah. So this one, this paper actually has some really, really nice, clear examples of what kinds of questions you should have. Right. Yeah. So um, let's just see what it says here. So it says we're just going to I'm just going to find it here somewhere. Um, can you see it's, it there, Mark? Yeah, it's at the bottom of the page, one of the pages, and it says, like, don't, basically it says, oh. don't ask, don't ask um, what did you get? Say, how did you solve that? Yeah, yeah. So it's actually right over here. I'm going to bring it just up in the paper really quickly. And it says, yeah, exactly like you said. It says, instead of saying, what did you get? It's yeah. about saying, um, how did you find that, right? Yeah. So that's nice. That's a nice tip. Like, I can probably do that tomorrow I can actually think about that question right yeah yeah for sure the last thing that we're going to talk about are the variations in a number talk and this particular one was talking about using turn and talk to think about someone else's thinking oh yeah okay so let's go down to this so this is where we found this this is what our tip from like you know what instead of what answer did you get what answer um, how did you get it but then right at the end of the paper this is really cool because it's actually making recommendations for further research yeah. but that recommendation actually gives indication of what else you could try in your classroom yeah so right over here so here's the variation yeah so it talks about um instead you know during that think time what you can ask students to do is to actually talk to each other right um and it says uh the goal of 
is understanding the partner's idea well enough to be able to explain it to the others, right? So that's a cool thing that you could try in number talks when you're in classrooms. Totally. Because like I could say to you, I could say like, hey, Tina, can you tell me about Mark's idea? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And then I would have had to listen to yours well enough so that I can share your idea. So that's a cool thing that they're actually pointing to like further research, but we could start trying in our classrooms. Um, don't forget to like and to hit that bell icon and subscribe because we are going to be doing this all the time. We're going to be going through papers and we're going to be pulling out those nuggets um, that we think that we could use in our own classrooms and that would be of interest to teachers. That's right. All right. We'll see everyone in the next episode.